The Wurlitzer 200A, it's a classic, but sadly not all of them are still complete. Looking online for them for sale, and if you're lucky enough to find one, then quite regularly the parts are missing. You find pianos with missing legs, you find pianos with extra legs, you find pianos with pedals missing. I guess the lack of a case for these pianos makes it difficult for when these pianos go in storage for all the parts to remain together. So I've been making odd bits for electric pianos and I can 3D print a Wurlitzer pedal, can I? Let's try. As the Wurlitzer features an iconic design, I really want to mirror this design and create a pedal that wouldn't look out of place and can be considered a reproduction. Luckily, my piano has its original pedal, so I'll take some basic measurements from this to make my similar design and recreate the look as much as possible. So this is going to be 3D printed as much as I can. I have to make the design feature a few changes just so that it's going to be strong enough when we make this out of a plastic alternative. So how does the original Wurlitzer 200A pedal work? Well, the Wurlitzer piano features a screw on the bottom. Pulling this screw deactivates the dampers, allowing the notes to ring out. The system is spring loaded so the piano itself returns the dampers, so it's very simple. So we just need something that pulls this screw when we put our foot down. The original pedal features a Bowden cable. And this is an inner steel flexible cable with a cable housing. The one on the original design is quite a sturdy cable and it transfers the movement of the pedal to the piano. I suspect that this is a motorbike or scooter cable. For my pedal, I'm just gonna use a bike brake cable. This is thinner, but I believe it's more than strong enough and at three pounds, it's quite the bargain, approximately $4. The screw features a non-standard thread for the UK, but it's easy enough to get from a hardware supplier. I put the description of what thread and size to get in the description. So here's a list of some of the hardware I think we need. I've got the nut, some grip tape, I've used some soft Velcro hooks, some wood screws, these can bite into the plastic, a pivot bolt, a brake cable, so here I've created a model of the parts that I think I need. So in FreeCAD, I've created the parts and a model to make up the design. We've recreated the connection between the piano and the cable. This has been thickened up as the material now is going to be weaker and this design closely resembles the original design. Next, we created the pedal housing and a pedal. This requires a couple of springs and screws to connect everything. And then next we've got the base plate. I'm just gonna cut some aluminium for this, just to keep the same look as the original. Okay, let's print this up and that's how it goes. If you've seen any of my other videos, I'm sure you know I'm a fan of 3D printed parts. They're great, you can design something and in a couple of hours you can have a physical version. But they are good for prototypes, but they don't fatigue very well. And they need to be designed for 3D printing and the method and the shape that you come up with can be quite different to what you would manufacture alternatively. It'll be interesting to see if my 3D printed parts or anyone else's 3D parts will hold up to a piano-like environment. I guess time will tell. But yeah, do check out my DIY electric piano project and subscribe if that's something you like. So yeah, we've got these parts printed. Next we just need to make the base plate. Okay, so I know how you're thinking. Is this pedal gonna be strong enough? Will it work like the old pedal? Let's test it. Can it stab through bread? Can it lift a Wurlitzer? Can I hit it with a hammer? Can I run over it in a car? It seems to be holding up pretty good. I think that'll do. Alright, let's start putting this together. So I'm going to thread in the brake cable and then slide in the nut to the ferrule. This can be pulled into the housing and the cable slid on. And then we can apply the clamp to the housing. This looks alright actually. So next we need to assemble the pedal. First we thread the cable through the housing and then we attach a spring to the pedal. 
just so it works without being attached to the piano. Next we want to insert the pedal and the bolt that it pivots on and then we can connect the spring for the pedal to the clamp and then we can clamp the outer cable and then we can clamp the inner cable. This will take a little bit of tweaking to get the pedal so that it feels right when it's attached to the piano. So next we need to clip on the side window and screw on the bass. Yeah, so I'm just going to use some loop velcro that's been left over from pedal board builds that sticky backed, seems to do the job, looks well, feels quite good on the foot, provides a bit of grip and yeah, I think it's starting to look quite good this. When I put it side by side, yeah, like, you know, from a distance you mightn't be able to tell. But yeah, it's not what it looks like, it does it actually do the job. So let's get it screwed in and... to work well. So this isn't the first one I made. I actually made another one of these pedals back in November and I actually want the second one for another project that's coming up. So subscribe for news on that but I don't want to say any more just at the minute. I have moved the piano and moved the pedal and plugged this in a few times so I think it's held up quite well. This has been used as my main pedal and I've had no complaints from it. I think initially the cable did slip, but once I tightened it up, it works perfectly. So yeah, I think if I depended on my pedal, I would want something quite sturdy and I would look at an actual original or proper reproduction. But you know, if you don't, if you're not doing live performances and you're not abusing the equipment, it's, it seems all right. Anyway, that's it for this video. I best get on with making my DIY electric piano. But yeah, till next time, goodbye.